Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add motion to your background images on scroll with Divi. This is the final result you're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. So we can call this page whatever we want. So I'm just going to call this motion to background images and then click on use Divi Builder. So for this example, I'm going to build everything from scratch, but you can follow along and also use this technique on an existing page. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click on start building. We're going to go with two columns here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now, before we add any modules, I need to come over here to my row settings and make some adjustments. So I'm going to click here on the gear icon to go into my row settings. Now, the first thing I need to do here is to go into design sizing. So here I'm going to activate use custom gutter width. Now, the gutter width is the space between the columns. So we want to make sure that we bring this all the way to one because now this means we have removed all the spaces between the columns. All right. So next I'm going to come over here to my width and set this to 100%. Now, I also need to do the same thing for the maximum width. So I'm going to set that to 100% too. Next, I'm going to uh, come over here to spacing. And here we need to uh, add a padding of zero, both to the top and the bottom. So what I've just done here is to just remove all the space between the columns. Okay, so the next thing we need to do now is to go back over here to content. Now on column two, we need to add some padding. So I'm going to come over here, click on this gear icon and then go to design spacing. So the padding here we're going to add is for the top and the bottom. And this needs to be 10 VW. And I also need to add 5 VW to the left and the right. Now, this again just gives us some breathing space on the content that we're going to add on the second column. All right, so now that I have this all set, the next step now is to add an image module to column one. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to save this, save this one more time, click here on this plus button and search for my image module and select it. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this first. And then we're going to add a gradient to this background. So I'm going to come over here, click on the second tab and then click on this plus button. So now it's time to add our first color. And by the way, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so let's go ahead and add our first color. So I'm going to click here. And uh, because this color here is going to have some transparency, I'm going to drag this slider down a little bit so that I can have my RGBA values. So now it's time to add my values between the brackets, just like that. Next, I'm going to add my second color. So I'm going to come over here and my second color here is going to be black. So go ahead and choose that. Next, my gradient type is going to be linear. So I'm going to leave it at that. And my gradient direction is going to be 185. So I'm going to set that to a 185. Now for this, we're going to place the gradient above the image. So we're going to come all the way down here and make sure you activate this and set it to yes. All right. So now that we have this all set, the next step now is to add our background image. So I'm going to come over here click on this plus button and now it's time to add our background image. Now you can add an image of your choice, but I'm going to go and add this one here. And the uh, sizes are 1600 by 1067 pixels or anything close to that should work fine. All right. So I'm going to upload the image. So now you can see my image has been added. Now let's add a top and bottom padding. So I'm going to come over here to design and I need to go to spacing. So here on the padding, I'm going to set this to 21 VW, activate bottom padding. So now we can see the full image and then we're going to save. Next, I'm going to add a divider to column one. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, search for divider and select it. So make sure show divider is set to yes. And then next we need to uh, come over here to design line and set our color to white. And then I need to uh, add my divider weight. So I'm going to come over here to sizing. So my weight here is going to be six pixels and the width is going to be 100%. Now let's head over here to spacing. And this is where we're going to add a top margin. So I'm going to start here by adding my 30 pixels for my top margin. And then I'm going to come over here to advanced position. And for my position here, I'm going to go with absolute. So I'm going to click here on this drop down choose my absolute and we're going to go with this center option. So now you can see my line or my divider there is all centered. All right. So that's looking great. So now I can save this. And the next step now is to add a text module to this same column. 
So I'm going to search for my text module here and select it. Here we can just add a country. So for this example, I'm just going to add Finland. But of course, you can be whatever text that you may want to add in here. And this is also going to be set to this uh, heading two. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this drop down and set this to heading two. All right. So now that I have heading two all selected, I'm going to come over here to design heading text and make sure I'm on heading two tab. This is where now we're going to stylize this text. So let's start off by adding our font. So my font here is going to be railway. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Next, I'm going to make this bold. So I'm going to select bold. My text color is going to be white. So let's go ahead and select that. Now it's time to set our heading to text size. So here we're going to set this to 70. Now, the next step is to make sure that this is centered. Now, I know I can't see this text because I set it to white on a white background, but we're going to resolve that soon. The next step now is to add our text shadow. So the style I'm going to go with is this one here. So now you can see it's now visible. All right. So with that set now, I need to uh, go to spacing. And this is where I'm going to add my top and bottom padding. So let's set this to 150. Okay. So 150 to top and bottom. Now we're going to go to advanced and this is where we need to go to position and we're also going to choose absolute. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now the location needs to be uh, centered as well, like what we did before, like that. So pretty much column one is now done. I'm going to save this and we need to come over here now to column two and add a text module. I'm going to select it. So here you can uh, add any text you want. So in this case, I'm just going to add text which says plan your next trip to beautiful landscapes. OK, so now that we have our text, we need to set this to heading three. So all you have to do is to highlight it and set this to heading three. So now that we have heading three, we need to stylize this text again. So we're going to come over here to the design tab, heading text and then select heading three. So here we're going to choose the same font that we used earlier on for this title. So we're going to go with railway and for the text size, we're going to go with 50 pixels. And for our line height, I'm going to set this to 1.2. Next, I'm going to add a bit of uh, margins to the bottom here. So I'm going to go to spacing and for the margin bottom, I'm going to set this to 50 pixels. Now it's time to add a text module to column two. So this text module here is just going to have some dummy text. But in your case, you can uh, add whatever text you want in that space. So I'm going to go ahead now and save this. And then I'm going to click here on this plus button and search for my text module and select it. So I'm just going to go in and replace this text with my own dummy text. So there we go. I've got my paragraph text now. Next, I'm going to come over here to design text and we need to change our font here to railway. Next, we are going to add our text line height and this needs to be at 2.5 EM. There we go. So now it has beautiful space between the lines, which makes it easier to read. All right. So moving on, uh, we also need a call to action button here. So I'm going to uh, save this and then come over here to the right and click on this plus button. Search for my button module just by searching a few letters here. And now that I have my text, we can just add whatever text we want here. But in this case, I'm just going to say browse offer. There we go. So here, right now you can see we have a basic button and make sure you add your button URL as well. So in this case, I'm just going to add a blank one. But in your case, you want to add a button, which then takes you to the specific page. All right. So now that I have this all selected, we need to stylize this button and make it look beautiful. So I'm going to come over here to design, click on button, and we want to activate use custom styles for button. Next, I'm going to set my size here for the button and it's going to be 25 pixels. Now we need to add our button text color and this is going to be black. All right. So next, we're going to go to our button border width and remove the border. So I'm going to come over here and just set this to zero. Now our text here has to be consistent with what we've been using before. So let's go ahead and fix that by coming over here to button font and setting it to railway. Next, we're going to make this bold. So I'm going to select bold here and for the button icon color, this also needs to be black. So I'm going to come over here and select my color. So when I uh, mouse over this area, you can see my icon is now black. Now you can go ahead and play around with this and change your icon styles. You can have it after the word or before the word. It's all up to you how you want to have it. So this is where you would place, place it to the left. And now you can see here it's before the word. Now let's head over here to spacing because this is where we need to add our margin. So I'm going to set my margin as 50 pixels. 
So pretty much that's all we need to do with the button. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Now we need to go to image one and add our motion background. So I'm going to click here on my settings, click on advanced, scroll effects, and this is where we need to add our settings. So we're going to start off with our vertical motion here and enable it. Next, we are going to uh, add our starting offset and this needs to be zero and the midpoint needs to be zero and over here we need to set this to minus two. Okay, so now that we have minus two there, the middle part here needs to be at 69%. So let's drag it all the way down here to about 69% and pretty much that's looking good. Now it's time to go into the horizontal motion and let's go ahead and uh, select that tab, activate it. And again, let's start with uh, starting offset of minus two. Our midpoint needs to be zero and then the ending also needs to be zero. So pretty much for this, that's all we need to do. And now let's move on to scaling up and down. So I'm going to come over here and select this tab, activate it. And now let's start with the viewport. So here we need to set this to 21%. Our midpoint here to 39 and then 54. All right, so our starting scale is going to be 70. Our meeting, uh, mid scale is going to be 80 and the ending is going to be 100%. So that's looking great. So pretty much that's all we need to do. We can save this now, but if you want to have different styles with this, I mean, as you can see here, this is pretty cool. Uh, you can just duplicate this as many times as you want and add more effects or just adjust the effects that you need on uh, the scrolling motions to have different motion styles. So pretty much we're going to save this now and do a quick preview. So I'm going to come over here, click on publish. Now we're going to exit the visual builder and take a quick look. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.